Hey guys, what's up? Today we're going to talk about this little strange looking device from Quelltech. Let's get into it. All right, first off, I apologize. Uh, my voice is kind of weird. We've got like strep stuff going on, so we're all sick. And I sound kind of weird and I'm hacking and spitting and just am off. But that's okay. We're going to run through this because um, this is really cool. This is very cool. I'm very excited about this. Um, this right here, this is like I said in the intro, this is from Quelltech, right? I bought it. This is not something that they sent to me or anything like that. This is an over the barrel mount. This is really cool. I did some looking around because uh, I was looking for something like this. And this is the only one of these that I could find from a company that actually had stuff in stock. So basically, this piece, if this is the barrel, okay, don't make jokes. If this is the barrel, this piece is made to go over the barrel, right? And then your suppressor attaches on top of this guy. This is the hub standard. This is the one and three eighths by 24 thread pattern. And I believe this reflexes from the, from right here to the end here. This is like two, two, two and three quarter inches, basically, something like that. So it reflexes your suppressor almost three inches, two and three quarter inches over the barrel. So something to note there real quick is depending on your suppressor, this may or may not work for you, all right? Because a lot of suppressors, this is not gonna work. Let me pull one out. Um, here's a, um, here's one that I wish worked. This is a Dead Air Nomad L. This would be awesome completely awesome if this would work problem is that first baffle maybe you can see it in there maybe you can't that first baffle is like two inches deep okay which is fine for most excuse me for most mounts but for this mount it stops right there there's no way i mean it's not going to work you can't you can't insert this far enough to secure it so it wouldn't work so be careful and you'd have to measure and you can get calipers you can even get a tape measure this is large enough you can stick a tape measure in there and you could measure the length the the, the depth that you have to play with right for this case that we have i think this is really cool this is a plug not really but kind of for jaking armament right now i got in this can i've had this one for a while um, this is the one that i did a video about a while back ago a lot of you liked um this is this was back whenever they were doing a lot of form one stuff so it was way easier we're not going to get into all that um, but it is a legal can it's fine it's registered it's all that kind of stuff but because of that i was able to build it the way i like it and they might still be able to help you do some things like that i think you can still do some custom cans from jk armament but basically i have these are this is my baffle stack all right so i only have five baffles in this guy these two that look like baffles are not baffles these are just spacers and we need those spacers, and I'll show you why. This is the serialized part. This is like the blast chamber of the suppressor. If you take the mount, it will fit on there perfectly fine. You thread it on, but now you can probably see what the problem is. The over-the-barrel mount is now protruding into where the baffles would be. If I tried to take the regular baffle stack and attach it like you regularly would, you can see we have a problem. We need something to take up this space right here we need something and that is where these little guys come in these are literally just spacers these are steel spacers there's no baffle in here nothing nothing at all you could potentially and i do not recommend doing this you could potentially cut your baffles right if you had machine stuff to do that you could potentially do that i would not do that that's just seems like a waste to me um i would try to find a way to get one of these or if you're going to have jake Harmon build you a can that has extra length on one side, right, extra length for an over the barrel mount, that'd be something to look into. But if you use two of these, because you need two of them for that extra standoff, these guys screw in, and now we have plenty of room down on the inside here for our baffle stack to hopefully align properly. He was doing this earlier, here we go. To align, to thread on, and now we have a suppressor that looks the same, but instead of using a traditional direct thread, and where the barrel would start right here, now the barrel goes all the way up into here, which gives a reflex mount. That's why it's called reflex mount or an over the barrel mount. So for kicks and giggles, I know I don't have a decibel meter and before everybody talks about it, I contact the people that actually make the quality good decibel readers. Those things are like thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. I'm already in trouble for spending too much money. So I'm not spending that much money on a decibel meter for you guys all right we're just not that cool yet um maybe at some point down the road but not right now so 
for now, I'm just gonna have to go off the audio that I have, which I already spent a bunch of money on a microphone, use quality headphones if you can, um, and see if you can tell any difference between a regular mount, this is a regular direct thread mount, and then I'll plug in my over the barrel mount um, and see if you can detect any difference. There should, in my, in my opinion, and I haven't tested this myself yet, there should be a difference because the downside of an over the barrel mount, the downside is you take up a lot of that internal volume. That blast chamber, you take up a lot of that space. So that volume is gone. So in theory, a direct thread, this should sound really good. Very large blast chamber um, and then five baffles. Should sound pretty decent. You throw in the direct, the, the, uh, the over the barrel mount, you're taking up a lot of that internal volume. So it'd be interesting to see. Uh, we're gonna be shooting this on a 20 inch AR-10. So 308, not a 5.56. Five, this is a bigger boy. Um, and we should be able to tell a difference, I hope. So hopefully you'll be able to put in some good headphones and let's try this. All right, so here we go, 20 inch AR-10. We're shooting, I don't remember, I think it's 145 grain Tula, right? <clears throat> nothing special, nothing really interesting. With a direct thread, JK Armament suppressor with two spacers, five baffles, uh, 30 cal clipped baffles. I think that's everything I could say. And the can is dry, it's not wet at all. All right, so three rounds, let's get a, let's get a point. Held open, did what he needed to do. For me, quite honestly, that is pleasant. I don't have ringing in my ears. Um, I almost wanna say that's more pleasant than 556 five, and that makes no sense. We do have an adjustable gas block, so we have already tuned this gun, so we don't have a bunch of excess gas coming out. But really, it's a nice whacking thud. You can tell it's got some power, but it's really not particularly that loud and thankfully the can's not super super hot but it did hold open now let's go ahead and let's put on the over the barrel mount all right so here's the over the barrel mount hopefully maybe with my editing i can show you this definitely reflexes this gives it a good amount it makes the whole system look a little bit shorter it almost makes it look like a direct thread um, 18 inch or almost a 16 inch gun with that suppressor being instead of being out here now it's back in here so all right so here we go three rounds all right so again to me in my ears it's not that bad. I don't, it's hard even to tell much of really a difference. I wanna say it's a little bit more noise. I wanna say that, but it's hard to really tell. It's negligible. It's negligible to me, which blows my mind and it goes against all the science. I'm sure if you put a decibel meter on it, I'm sure you would have a difference. There would be a major difference, I'm sure. But to my ears, to human ears, it's just, I'm not picking up significant differences. All right, a couple different things. Um, let's talk about this guy real quick. A couple different things about this. Um, this is all this guy is. It's very, very simple. Um, it's really, really very simple, and it's just genius. I'm surprised more companies don't make something like this. Something that this, it just, it just works. There's not a whole lot to it. The one thing I would be a little bit concerned about, um, and I initially was, I'm not now, um, but was the fact that there's no tapers on this mount. So getting everything aligned, when you start adding you know, aftermarket mounts to your suppressors, it can get a little iffy because you don't want to have baffle strikes and then all, just a bunch of mess. You don't want to have that. This has no tapers on it, which generally tapers are used and they're a very good thing in general. They help align everything very, very well. 
since there's no tapers, I was a little worried about that. After I installed everything at the back of the shop, I ran a rod through the barrel. Um, everything appeared to be perfectly aligned. And after the fact, after shooting a little bit, this guy's a little hot now. Um, hopefully we can get this off without killing my fingers. Yep, here we go. Hopefully, as we'll be able to tell, there are no baffle strikes and there's no copper swiping or anything. This guy was perfectly aligned. That's the end cap. This guy was perfectly aligned, no problems at all. Um, and I can understand, um, after really thinking about it, <clears throat> I can understand why Quelltech did not do tapers. The, uh, there's only a couple companies out there that really make tapered barrels for their guns, right? Unless it's boutique, custom kind of stuff. General out of the box barrels and stuff don't come with tapered barrels. They're 90 degree flats, so or shoulders. So I understand why they didn't do that. Um, and kudos to them, they've made something that's pretty dang cool. So I think it's neat. Let me know, let me know. Wow, I told you I'm off today. Let me know what you guys think about this. I think it has its place, particularly like we have it had it on our 20 inch AR 10 for a longer gun to still suppress it, but bring it back a little bit shorter. You don't need a telephone pole hanging out the front of your gun. Maybe you do. Maybe you're just a bench rest shooter and you don't give a flip, right? Or maybe you, you're a hunter and you wanna make things as compact as possible, but you still want as much velocity out of that gun. So there's a give and take, and everybody has their different reasons for what, how much they're willing to give to be able to take whatever the thing is, right? right? Whether they wanna get more velocity or whether they want more volume in their can to make the can sound better and even having this can sound better i'm not sure if it did sound better one way or the other it sounded pretty dang close the same to me and that was just me and my ears so anyway guys again let me know what you guys think if you like this stuff let me know um if you want to see earlier release content and stuff like this go follow us over on patreon i really appreciate the guys over there that do that we should have a merch shelf now so you can buy merch and stuff down below if you want to if you're so inclined to do that if you also want to follow us on some of our other platforms like rumble uh, we're over there, um, Gunstreamer, different places. We post pretty much same content here, but we post it over there. It's a good place just in case this channel gets wiped out again. That's it. I appreciate you guys. Appreciate your support and everything. And hopefully, we'll catch you guys in the next video. See you.